In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between acquisition parameters and the shapes of peaks that we see in photo emission spectra. The shapes of peaks are important because chemical state analysis relies on the fitting of peak shapes with synthetic line shapes. When we analyze data, we would like to believe that the data are represented with a sample. If the acquisition conditions are altering peak shapes, then the problem of constructing a peak model becomes instrument dependent, which is sometimes unavoidable, but nevertheless we would like to reduce the influence of the instrument on a peak model so that we can apply that peak model to other data from other instruments. The example that we'll consider is a gold 4D doublet and this has been measured using two different pass energies. We have a pass energy 50 and a pass energy 40 spectrum and if I overlay these, you can see one of the fundamental differences between pass energy 50 and pass energy 40, and that is that the signal decreases. So the count rate drops when we go between 50 and 40 for the following reasons. The concept of pass energy is related to the hemispherical analyzer. The hemispherical analyzer is formed from two concentric hemispheres, and these are electrodes that create a spherically symmetric field between these two electrodes such that if an electron enters along the mean radius then it will exit along the mean radius and will traverse the analyzer along this mean radial path. The energy that will allow an electron to move from one side of the hemisphere to the other is the pass energy of the analyzer. When we consider the amount of signal that can be recorded at a given operating mode, the factors that influence this will be the width of the entrance aperture, the width of the detectors, and the dispersion of electrons through the hemispherical analyzer. And the thing that alters when we change the pass energy is the dispersion. These other two factors are fixed, but when we disperse the electrons to a greater or lesser extent, then we alter the count rate. It's possible to visualize this using the idea of an entrance slot that represents the acceptance of electrons into the hemispherical analyzer. And this is of a given dimension. And the functioning of a hemispherical analyzer is that it transfers an image of this entrance slot onto the detectors. And at pass NG50, if we have two different traces here representing two different energies, then the trajectory here is forming an image for a given energy and another energy produces a second image and for pass energy 50 both sit on the detector whereas at pass energy 40 the dispersion is greater and an image that would sit on the detector at pass energy 50 no longer does so only one set of electrons will be counted in this case whereas both would be counted in pass energy 50 and this is the reason why pass energy 50 spectra have more counts per second than pass energy 40. In the case of the gold 4D, it's clear that there's an advantage in using pass energy 50 over pass energy 40. That is, the peak shapes are very much the same, and yet with pass energy 50 we obtain better signal to noise because the count rate is higher. This is not always the case. In fact, if we look at the silver 3D, so again a doublet, but in this case, the underlying photoemission peak is very narrow. So if we want to see this photoemission peak, we need to use pass NG10. And that way, we can see something that is closer to what we would expect for the photoemission peak. If we use these other pass energies, you can see how the instrumental influence on the line shape is being amplified by the increasing pass energy. So by 200, we have a, a line shape that is very different from the underlying photoemission peak. And this would have an influence on the type of synthetic component one might use in a peak model. If I now construct a peak model for the gold 4D, this will be an example of how a peak for which the instrumental artifacts are minimized allows a very simple peak model to be created that reproduces the data extremely well. While there is an intensity difference between the pass NG40 and the pass NG50, we can illustrate that this intensity difference is not introducing differences in the peak shape by normalizing the data. 
fact, if I do a range normalization, then you can see quite clearly that these two spectra have almost identical shapes. So I will create a peak model for one of these spectra, and then I'll propagate the peak model to the other to demonstrate that the one peak model will apply to both. A peak model is created using the quantification parameters dialog window. And on the regions property page, a background to data is created, which is traditionally either a Tugar or perhaps a Shirley. While both of these are possible, what I'll do in this case is I'm going to create a background that is just a straight line. In fact, it's a horizontal line. And this will be used as the pedestal upon which curves will be created to represent both the photo emission peaks and also the background. An approach that relies on fitting curves that represent the background as well as the photo emission peaks requires a pedestal in the form of this min limbs background. And I need to offset the current background to allow room for these component peaks to fit the data. So I can do this either using the end offset. So if I set that to say 50, the background is then offset by 50% of this end limit. And in order to see the full extent of the model, what I'm going to do is use an option which auto scales the range, including the background. So when I select this option and I then auto scale, then rather than simply auto scaling to the data itself, the background is also included in the auto scale operation so I can see this minimum limits background at the same time as the data. Although this is a doublet where there are two peaks, I'm going to focus initially on the five halves peak of the gold 4D. And this allows me to limit the number of components in my first optimization. So I'll create a component and the line shape that has come in is a DS0, 20. This is a Voigt function with a small amount of Gaussian convoluted with a Lorentzian. And the line shape is reasonably good. It looks very similar to the data. So I'll leave the line shape without any adjustment. And then if I copy this and paste, I get an identical peak. And this time I'm going to change the line shape and I'm going to make this a curve that is calculated from the line shape in the image of a Shirley background. So this is a Shirley background that depends on the DS line shape and I want to associate this with the photo emission process of this gold 4D 5 halves peak and I'm going to do that by fixing the full width half maximum and fixing the position. I end up with a background shape that will be associated with this particular photo emission peak and then I should be able to fit this to the data. However, there is an offset that has been intentionally introduced by offsetting this min limits background, which I need to allow to adjust in order to fit these two shapes to the data. So I'm going to introduce another shape and this one, I'm going to enter TP and press return. And what this does is it introduces a trapezium. In this case, it's a rectangle, but I'm going to make this a trapezium with the difference in the left and the right hand side of the height of the trapezium so that allows an inclined slope if it is required. If at this point I now press the fit components button then all three of these components will be fitted to the data. And as it stands the fit isn't particularly good and when I look at the display it indicates I have a red parameter for the area of the Shirley background. And when fitted to data, a curve that represents a background has a much greater area. And so I need to give it more room in order to fit these data. When I press fit again, then the component fits nicely with a, a Shirley background and a trapezium representing an inclined slope which is typical of what you'd expect for a signal that is arriving beneath this peak as a consequence of inelastic scattering from the gold 4F. To complete the peak model, what I need to do is include both parts of the doublet. So if I extend the background and then go back to the components property page, copy the component that represents the photo emission peak, and because of these constraints that are applied to the Shirley background that are associated with this peak, 
When I copy the component, it will also copy the Shirley background. So when I say paste, I end up with a new set of components, and these can be used to represent this gold 4D three halves, provided I move the component, and I'll need to allow the space to move this component from one side to the other. So I've just expanded the position constraints, and I hold the control key down, and then point at the component peak, and then slide, and I end up with two components representing photo emission peaks, both with Shirley backgrounds associated with these peaks. So when I say fit, I end up with a fit that is to both parts of this doublet and a residual that is certainly acceptable in terms of the residual standard deviation and also how uniform the residual plot appears. That is the difference between the data and the sum of these components. The residual plot in this case is also normalized with respect to the counts per bin. This is assuming pulse counted data and the uncertainty in each data bin is the square root of the counts per bin so the residual is normalized with respect to one standard deviation within the signal. This certainly helps to improve the uniformity of the plot but actually in this case because the peak above background is not significantly different if we were to turn off the normalization we still have a plot that is very uniform. This is really quite a good fit to the data. If we now propagate from the pass energy 40 to the pass energy 50 we then end up with another fit and again we have a, a very good residual standard deviation and uniformity. So this peak model is working for both pass energy 50 and pass energy 40 data. One of the reasons the peak model works so well for these data is that the synthetic line shapes are representative of the shapes that we see in the photo emission process. That is to say that the instrumental artifacts have not played a significant role in these data. Hence when we fit synthetic components that model the photo emission process we end up with a very good residual.